All right, Charlie Craven back again, and now I'm going to tie for you, just for you. Don't share this. This is just for you. Um, a gotcha, which is one of the best bonefish flies of all time. Um, and this uh, this fly is sort of at home in the Bahamas, but uh, can be used really anywhere. Um, uh, the Bahamas version is generally tied a little bit bigger. Bahamas flies are a little bigger for bonefish uh, because the bonefish are a little bigger, but... Uh, um, this is sort of a generic uh, bonefish fly these days, and uh, it's got all the all the things that you need, which is some some pearl flash, a little bit of uh, pink or orange, and a tan wing. Um, and there's uh, you know this is an old fly, and the uh, original method of tying it, um, honestly, these days I think is a little outdated. So we're gonna we're gonna update it a little bit. And this is the way I've sort of always tied it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a Tiemco 811S, and this is a size 2, which is, uh, again, like I say, Bahamas size. Um, you know, if you're fishing uh, Belize or Mexico, you'd probably tie it down to a 6 or an 8. Um, but I'm going to start with some 140 denier, oh, there's no sticker on that one. It's 140 denier shell pink um, UTC thread. And I'll start that thread just behind the eye. And I'm going to make a thread base over the front, oh, third or so of the shank. And I'm going to bump back. I want to leave a long nose on this fly, so I want kind of a long head. So I'm going to be, you know, a fourth of the hook shank back. And I'm going to tie in a pair, in the case of this size two, these are large size bead chain, um, silver bead chain. And I'm going to X these in with X wraps. So what I'm doing here is going six or eight turns one direction. I'm going to wrap around the hook and six or eight turns the other direction. I'm going to wrap around the hook and I'll just keep doing that until I build up a little swell of thread in between there to cover the crossbar in the eyes, like so. And then I'll run my thread all the way back to the bend. And back up again. Now, the original version of this fly um, was tied with mylar tubing. Um, and I'm going to, while I talk here, I'm going to put a little head cement there between the eyes and even down that shank just to lock things down. Um, but the original version was tied with mylar tubing, which, um, well, not only being a pain in the ass to work with, is is also a uh, uh, not very durable material. Um, didn't hold together very well. It shreds. Um, and that's uh, just sort of, you know, what was available back in the day. That was kind of the only sort of new flash that, that they had back way back when. And... Uh, these days we've got much cooler stuff, and uh, what I'm going to use is flat diamond braid. Um, and this is pearl flat diamond braid. Um, I'm going to take a section of it for the tail, and I'll tie it in here just behind the eyes. But I want to leave a long enough tag in here in the front um, that I can fold that back and make the tail. So I'm going to fold that back and wrap back over both strands of that back to the bend. And then I'll run my thread back forward, and I'll cut that off about a hook gap. Uh, hook gap width long, and uh, then I'll, you can see that's sort of flat now. We'll take my little wire brush of any any variety of styles and shred that out and make a tail. You can even just do that with your fingers um, to make that tail. So now I'm going to take that same piece of flat diamond braid, um, and I like to jump just in front of the eyes and tie it down there. And I'll run back over it all the way back to the base of the tail. And I'll hit that one more time with some heads of it. Um, this just locks these things in. Bonefish flies, you know, if they're tied well, um, can hold up ridiculously well. I mean, you can fish the same fly for a week if it's the one that's working, um, as long as you don't lose it. Um, so, you know, if you feel like you're about to lose it, then, uh, I don't know, be, be a little more careful. Uh, so now I've got that piece of diamond braid tied in there. And I'm going to start to wrap this, and I'm going to overlap these turns because I want to build a little bit of a tapered body as I come up behind the eyes. You can see I'm getting a little more and more overlapped as I get up to the eyes. And I'll cross under the eyes and all the way over, and under the hook and over. And then I'll tie that piece of flash off. And what I've got is a, a finished bottom of the fly there. And then I'll come in and trim my flash out. Now, if you like, um, 
you can turn this hook up upside down. I'll go ahead and do that. If you've got a rotary vise, just flip it over, but I'm just going to turn that upside down. Um, this next piece is sort of sort of optional, um, depending on um, if you want the flash in there. Um, I'll give you the option. If you don't like it, don't don't do it. Um, what I'm going to do is measure this piece of, of diamond braid just out past um, the end of the tail, and I'm going to tie this down at the back of that thread head area. And then I'll fold that back again. Now, I don't want both strands of that flash in there, so I'm going to cut one off. But the fold is important so that that, that flash stays anchored. Um, and now I can take my, my brush, or even just your scissor tips, and sort of fray this out. A dubbing needle will work. Um, any variety of things would work. I'm going to use the brush because that seemed to work better. to shred that flash, and you can see that sort of comes out uh, crinkled, like so. I'll leave that hanging back. I want to clean that head area up a bit. Now we're going to add the wing in. What the wing is is uh, a craft fur or polar fiber, and I'm going to use some uh, polar fiber in this case, and this is uh, sand color, tan color. Um, I'm going to take a nice clump of this and cut it off the hide. And you can see it's pretty wispy as you cut it off. I'm going to sort of hand stack that bunch. Pull some of that under fur out. And bundle that up into a, a nice little bunch here. Like so. Now I want this about one and a half times the length of the hook shank. And I see that I'm a little bit off the screen there, but I'll bump this up when we get uh, when we get to that point. But I'm going to lay this in and tie it down at the back of that head area, right up on top of the hook. Oh, and what happened there was I touched the edge of one of these eyes somewhere along the way, and so I sliced right through even that heavy thread. Well, that sometimes happens. Avoid the edges of the eyes. I'll pull that polar fiber out, start my thread right back over the broken ends. Um, I'm leaving that in. I could have edited, edited that out. Um, but, you know, I feel like you should know sometimes thread breaks. It's not the end of the world. Um, so I'm going to avoid hitting the edge of that eye. I'm going to measure that wing again. Get a couple turns on it. Anchor that down with a little band of thread there. And then I'll lift these butt ends up and I want to come in from the front side and sort of cut those at an angle. so that I can build a smooth thread head down over them. Now the thread head on a bonefish fly like a gotcha is actually part of the fly. This is sort of where the color comes in. Um, and I've done gotchas with uh, both orange or pink heads. Um, but it's a fairly prominent long, long head that you want to build up here. And you can see I'm just running the thread back and forth, um, which is why I'm using the 140 denier thread. If you use smaller thread, um, you can still get the job done. It just takes a lot longer. So I'm going to smooth that all off, get a nice clean head on there, and then I'll come in with my whip finisher, whip finish that thread. Now one thing that I see um, a lot of these days is, is resin. I'm going to bump this over just a little bit here so you can get a little better view of him. That's a little better. Uh, but one of the things I see is, is uh, especially on saltwater flies, is coming in and just putting big gobber resin on that thread head. Um, one of the things with resin is it does not uh, penetrate into the thread near as well as head cement does. Uh, so before I put any resin on this, I'm going to put regular old school head cement all over that thread head and let it soak in. And if you leave your fly vertical in the vise like that, you can actually see here, it's kind of running into the base of the wing and into the base of the eyes. That'll lock things in. And honestly, I've fished just that version there uh, for years and years. Just very, very simple little gotcha, um, you know, with just the head cement on it. You can come in and put a coat of resin over the top of that once it dries, but let that head cement soak in and uh, uh, penetrate into the thread and lock everything down first. Um, if you want to gloss that head up with some resin after the fact, you can certainly do that, but uh, um, just the coat of head cement will, will do plenty. Um, and you can kind of get an idea, you know, keeping in mind that 
bonefish flies. This is a little shrimp, and he swims backwards, so this is the front end, and the, the eyes are the back end. Um, and those eyes are just for weight. They're not uh, not to be the eyes of the critter. They're just for the weight to get the fly down. Um, and, of course, you can vary those as well. But um, that's a simple standard little gotcha. Let me get him back in, in the jaws here. Simple standard little gotcha. You want that wing centered on top. Not a hard fly. Um, you know, honestly, saltwater flies are, in most cases, uh, much easier to tie than trout flies. And uh, this is a great example of, of one that is. Um, now that that's soaked in a bit, I can put a little resin on there. I'll take a little bone dry plus and coat all the way around. Gloss that up a bit if you if you feel like it. Get that evened out a bit. And then I'm going to hit that with my lamp from far away and sort of on and off just to pretty that up a bit so your friends think you're cool and everybody on Instagram likes you. And now you got a shiny headed fly. It looks like you did a really good job of putting the thread head on there even though you covered it up with resin. Um, I did a pretty nice job on the head of the fly even without the resin, but if you didn't, a resin will hide it, um, which is why it's so prominent these days. But anyway, I'm just becoming an old curmudgeon. You damn kids. Anyway, there's a gotcha. Tie some up. Go catch a bonefish somewhere. Um, Bahamas is nice this time of year. Maybe I should go there. I need a vacation. You guys take care. Charlie Craven.